All right, chapter 27 is going to talk about growth and development of the preschooler. So we're just moving right along here. So the preschool patient is between the ages of three to six. Um, there's still continued growth and development. They gain cognitive language and psychosocial development, and those are all at really substantial growth. Many tasks that began during the toddler years are mastered and they're perfected during this preschool time. Their weight averages about five pounds per year. Stature, they gain about two and a half to three inches per year. They do lose a lot of that baby fat and gain some of that muscle at this point. So they're going to appear more upright and slender. Preschoolers should continue to just follow that established growth curve. So we're still looking at any deviations, even though they may um, lose that baby fat and slender down, they should still be established on that growth chart. Physiological changes that we can talk about um, as far as neuro, they definitely have more bowel and bladder control. Um, their spinal cord is myelinated by the age of three. As far as respiratory, we're still increasing those alveoli and their airway is increasing. Cardiovascular heart rate still decreases, blood pressure still is increasing. Um, this is when they may hear a little murmur if it's going to be heard. Most of the time those are heard prior to this. Um, and most of the murmurs that they might hear are usually very innocent. As far as head, eyes, ears, nose, and throat, their eustachian tubes remain short and straight. Short and straight, meaning they are at a little bit higher risk for um, ear infections. And they have up to about 20 deciduous teeth, or those primary teeth. Um, genitourinary, their urethra remains short, um, so they are, girls especially are at higher risk for UTIs. Um, musculoskeletal um, bones are increasing in length and they are getting more muscle strength and maturation. As far as motor skills, again, these are just uh, increasing with age. They're becoming more agile while standing, walking, running, and jumping. They can go up and down the stairs really well. They can walk forward, they can walk backwards. As far as fine motor, again, those grasping things are becoming more adult-like. They can freely scribble, copy circles, trace squares. They can usually feed themselves now without too much spill. This chart just shows you the different fine and gross motor skills that you would expect in this age group, three years, four years, and five years. So just make sure you're aware of those different skills. When we think about psychosocial development, um, again, we're gonna refer back to Eric Erickson. With this age group, it's initiative versus guilt. So these guys are very inquisitive um, learners. They're very enthusiastic about their learning. Um, and they feel a great sense of accomplishment when the, they succeed at activities. They have a lot of pride because they accomplish that by stimulating the initiative. A lot of times if they exceed themselves or if they exceed their expectations more than what they're capable of, then that's when that sense of guilt sets in. So making sure that we always are encouraging these kids at this age to set expectations that are realistic, that are accomplishable, because if it's too high above their capability, it's going to throw them into that other part of that psychosocial development, which is that sense of guilt. Uh, they are super ego. They're conscious about development, and it's completed in basis of a morale development. So they know at this point what is right from what is wrong. When we think about Piaget, um, we're still continuing that pre-operational sub-stage um, egocentrism, self-centered understanding of the world is two to four, and then they move into that intuitive phase, which is that four to seven years of age. These kiddos um, cognitively are magical thinkers. 
They believe thoughts are all powerful. They are, have tra some transduction, some animism, which means they're just giving attributes of lifelike qualities to inanimate objects. And they will also have lots of imaginary friends being just a creative way to um, do activities, um, display behaviors and practice conversation skills with their imaginary friends. As we're promoting growth and development through play, um, making sure, right, we're giving that sense of initiative, we're encouraging effort and accomplishments and we're giving them the opportunity to decide how and who to play with. They do begin playing cooperatively with others. They like imagination play, dressing up, fantasy play. It helps with that social skills, taking turns, communication. Um, it makes them pay attention, especially if they're playing games. The dress up helps stimulate some curiosity and creativity. Drama play is also with that older preschool um, they can come up with very complex scenarios that can express um, their emotions, um, their fears, things like that. So drama play um, and imaginative play are all very much part of this preschool age. And then remember physical activity, um, limiting that television time, games, things like that, making sure they're getting out to um, physically play outside. As far as social skills, um, again, they're beginning cooperation. They're gonna start playing with others and cooperating. They will start sharing. Um, this could be things or feelings, um, kindness, generosity, affectionate um, display. They can really start carrying on great conversation, um, helping others. And this is when they start really making lots and lots of friends. As far as emotional development, we can talk about friendship. They um, learn to make and keep friends. Um, there's probably some of you out there that know your, know somebody from preschool, right? It's a lifelong, some of these friends become lifelong friends. As far as temperament, um, again, they can be influenced by their parents' expectations. Um, they may be, um, some of their temperament may be very task oriented, social flexibility and reactivity. So depending on what's going on might just determine that temperament. When they're thinking about fears, there are a variety of fears, um, sometimes loud noises, barking dogs, imaginary monsters can be fears of this age group. Make parents just need to acknowledge those fears and kind of develop a strategy to deal with the fear. Communication and language development. We talked a little bit about telegraphic speech at that age three. Um, it's gonna progress, right? They're just using, they just wanna get the information through. So they're just using the important word, words, but it's gonna progress to full sentences by the age of six. Five years of age, they have about 2000 words. They, they start in the preschool ages with kind of that stuttery choppy language and it becomes more fluent um, and smooth sounding. They do have some symbolic thoughts and they don't, but they don't understand the concept of death at this point. So how do we promote some growth and development? We wanna go, remember we're going back to that initiative versus guilt. Um, so sense of time and structure to feel safe and secure. Some of the expectations and guidances that we can think about, um, remembering that these are fantasy and magical thinkers. So we may need to structure or guide that behavior between what is fantasy and what is actual reality. If they have any delay in any gross or fine motor skills or delay in emotional or social, social delays, um, we just need to make sure we're making that those parents are aware of those delays and making sure that they're coming in to be seen for that. Then we wanna to try to catch those delays sooner than later. Signs of developmental delay um, at our four-year-old, um, can't jump in place, ride a tricycle, not grasping crayons, um, can't use the words me and you appropriately, not engaged in fantasy play as they get to five. You can see those there, not building a tower, 
not using plurals, easily distracted, um, more than less than five minutes, things like that. Daily nutritional requirements, just know that there are some requirements here. Um, making sure, I think the biggest one here is making sure that we're not giving them a lot of um, high calorie foods or high calorie fruit juices. Um, making sure we're still offering those very healthy choices with each meal and with each snack. So what are things we can do as nurses to promote growth and development? Um, we can definitely do it through play. Remember, imaginative play, drama play, um, because they're cooperating, they're building on those complex cognitive thoughts. Um, promote early learning, again, reading, writing, language development is also going to help with that reading and that writing. Choosing a preschool or starting kindergarten, um, parents need to start thinking about those things. Promoting safety, nutrition, sleep, rest, all the things we've talked about before, we really want to make sure that we're still focusing in on those thoughts. <laughs> As we think about building healthy eating habits, um, preschoolers can be very erratic eaters. They may go days just eating everything in the house and then they may go days without hardly eating anything. Um, so just know that that is very common. Snacks need to be high quality. Um, they may get hungry in the afternoon and just making sure those snacks are very high quality snacks and not just calorie intake. Family meal times allow for parents to model appropriate behaviors at mealtime and really facilitate some communication. As far as prevention of overweight and obesity, again, we're promoting healthy eating habits. <clears throat> Picky eaters, um, this can be frustrating and it can really try the parents' patience. Um, just try to find something that um, can help still promote some of that health. They do like to be in social conversation during meal times, um, so continue to keep those meal times structured. It's gonna it, those structured meal times are gonna lead um, to like less fat, less calorie consumption. So, what are the risks of overweight, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, and insulin resistant? Um, unfortunately. The United States, the overweight population just seems to be getting younger and younger. Some developmental issues and concerns with this age group can include sleep, nightmares versus night terrors. Um, discipline can definitely be an issue. Lying becomes an issue because they fear punishment. Sex education. Um, this is where the age group where they're going to be inquisitive. They want to know where do babies come from. So making sure the parents are aware that question could come up um, so that they have a really good response back. And then masturbation, their exploration is healthy and natural for preschoolers. They just need to understand that it's not acceptable in public um, and also know that they no one else should be touching those private parts. And that concludes my preschool growth and development, chapter 27. If you have any questions, you can shoot me an email or we can chat about it in class. Thanks, guys.